Hi everybody! Well, we're in the studio again today and we are going to be painting a cute little cat hitting the butterflies. Boom, boom, with his little paws. So, um, that kind of reminds me of a pay, uh, picture, well, years ago I had, we, my daughter had a cat and she also had a fish and it was in this fish bowl and the cat climbed up this uh, it was a um, bookcase climbed up on top of the bookcase because that's where the fishbowl was she tried to keep it away from the cat and that cat banged the heck out of that fish until it died I says it was pretty pretty intense so they kind of like the bad things sometimes I guess <laughs> I don't know but anyway so this is a little cat uh, I may have not done a straight line here I tried to do it again you know but um, I might redo that again. Um, hold on one second. Let me go get a, a pencil here. And uh, I can see that when I drew this in, and I will have this um, out on the um, on my website for the uh, traceables. Yeah, see now, like I'm using this, and it looks like it's straight, but. It might be a little off. Just a tad off. Sometimes it's really hard to trace things. Maybe that's a little bit better now. Then you can just move this up. But I um, traced this and then I went over some of the areas. Because like when you're tracing, sometimes the lines get a little messed up. So you want to kind of make everything as straight as possible. Uh, so it's like a window and we're going to start with this. Uh, I'm going to just go through some of the um, colors we're going to be using today in this painting. Uh, we have a violet. So I have this violet here from Grumbacher. I have phthalo green. Now this is, this was a clearance. I'm not sure if it was a clearance because of the size of the tube or what but it phthalo green is what you'll need so this is a you know whatever brand this is Galleria Windsor Newton um, I have a Azo orange acrylic from Amsterdam so I have various shades here so just oh no that we have like um, let's see we have six colors we're going to be using uh, we had cad, cad yellow this is basic we have titanium white, and this is um, Grumbacher. And I had one more co color. I don't, I don't, oh, here it is. We have burnt umber, and this is also a large tube. So you might be able to find this in a smaller tube. Um, I bought these on clearance, and I think that's because they were large tubes, and they weren't going to carry the large ones anymore. Okay, so uh, I'm going to put these out on my palette, and we can get started. So I'll put them out, and then I'll show you what I have on my palette, because after that, it's kind of hard to show you. Um, I'll show you how I do this. Um, I'm almost, almost like, uh, um, what's his name? Oh my gosh, it just escaped my mind. But if you look at this, I have one of these stay wet palettes. So I have paper towel around here and it's soaking wet. And I'm going to put my colors on that. And um, that's where we're going to stick them so that they stay wet and moist because it's kind of warm right now. And I am concerned about the heat um, trying to keep everything nice and moist. Hopefully I can open my tubes of paint. Sometimes they get a little hard to open. So I'm going to put my violet out. And I'm just going to go around the palette. Uh, I'm going to put my orange. Ooh, that made a lousy noise, didn't it? Did you hear that? <clears throat> kind of almost farted. <laughs> if you want to say. I'm going to get my yellow. 
Yeah, they're all coming out like that. Hmm, huh, interesting. Interesting. My burnt amber. My phthalo green. I'm going to put up in the corner here. green let's see and my titanium white so this is kind of how I have it okay so we're gonna start out we're gonna mix a little bit of our titanium white with a three quarter inch flat brush. Well, I'm gonna just use my number 12, uh, Simply Simmons Bright. We're gonna be painting inside the window here. So we're gonna mix um, some titanium white and a little bit of our burnt umber, like four to one, I would say. Uh, four to one is good. almost kind of light I mean it, it could be a little darker let's just get this in and see maybe I want it darker I don't know too much paint on the brush too much too much yeah this is kind of light so we'll probably be going over this a little bit later with some darker first we'll put the light in and it's kind of hard sometimes to get that straight hope you've been painting a lot um, I still would like you to uh, go on Facebook and find my Pittsburgh Artist Studio and go into my Pittsburgh Artist Studio and I always forget this <laughs> boy my brain is just gone um, and post some paintings uh, join the group I believe there's a link on my Pittsburgh artist studio that you can just go directly into it let me just look that up for a minute because um, I always forget my last part of that is that weird or what so I'm going into my phone right now going into Facebook Let's see here. Let me see. Yeah, it's Pittsburgh Artist Studio Official. So, this is what you want to see. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, and join it. And then you can post some paintings. Look at some of the pretty paintings that have been posted. That's one. Um, here's another one I thought those were two very nice paintings and I'm looking for ten so I could have a drawing and uh, you win a nice little shirt and maybe something else along with it but you have to post your paintings something that you've done from my my painting series here on uh, on YouTube. So, oh my goodness, I am not very good at getting those straight. Doing my best. Doing my best. Sometimes it's really hard to get around these little things. I'm going to get a little bit of a smaller brush. This is my number 12 social art working brush. Kind of 
kind of get a little bit closer without getting too many out of the lines here. That's because I'm painting up and it's a little hard for me to paint upwards because I can't get my easel down any further. So once this dries, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I can put some tape on that when I'm painting the other parts. So I'm going to tape, I mean, I'm going to paint around these little butterflies. Just want to paint right around the little butterflies. We're going to paint around the little kitty cat too. And like I said, as soon as this dries a little bit, we're going to put some darker on here because I'd rather have it a little darker. It's kind of got to be shadowy like. You want it shadowy. My head is not in the way, I hope. <laughs> Always in the way, my head. kitty kitty I'd like to know if anybody out there has a little cat um, I used to have, well my daughter had the cat uh, got a little kitty boys about 19 years old now Cheech he's still hanging in there poor little thing he uh, he's adorable Good, cute little cat <clears throat> She got him whenever she was in uh, West Virginia. She worked at the Greenbrier as a pastry chef. And she was living in this one <clears throat> area that had a huge field out near her. And the field was loaded with field mice. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I told her, and the field mice would come into her apartment she was above a, a garage and it was a very nice apartment very cute very nice lady um, who rented it out to her and uh, I, I told her I says why don't you ask the landlord if you can have a cat because you're getting all these mice and you know in your apartment you don't need that I mean they're eating the food and everything, you know. So uh, she was able to get a cat. She went to the West Virginia Humane Society there. And uh, little Cheech came over to her, liked her right away. And she, he was about a year old, I guess. Um, cute as can be. He's like a little tuxedo cat. And they hit it off. And... That cat's been with her ever since, and it was catching the mice one day. Woke her up with a mouse in his mouth. <laughs> she just didn't know what to do, and she just, like, pushed the cat away. Poor cat. Brought her that present, was so happy it caught the mouse, and then after that, he never would catch anything after that. It kind of, like, I guess shook him up. But, uh... We have quite a number of stories. It's kind of funny. She's no longer a pastry chef. She was in a bad accident down there, so she came back home. Now she's married and no children. She doesn't, I don't think she wants kids right now, but she's going to college getting going in for uh, theater and arts and stuff like that. I have two girls 
and two grandkids. It's a little bit easier for me to do this section because it's more to where I'm at. Just take your time when you're doing these things. Don't rush. Because when you rush, I mean, it just, uh, you get, you get all those wobbly lines. I, even down here, it would be more wobbly, you know, so you want to not rush. Not rush. And like I said, we're going to go over this a little bit uh, with some dark. Because I want it darker. So I'm going to get more of my burnt umber out on my palette. And just kind of lightly glaze over this. Rinse out my brush. I'm rinsing out my brush right now. This might be a little bit more difficult for people because of the fact that it is, um, we're just going to kind of go like this uh, with these windows. We're just going to kind of brush it lightly over here. I'm gonna wait till this dries. It's still not dry enough. I want it a little bit drier because I want this to show up. So once this dries, we'll go into something different here. Now uh, I'm going to mix some burnt umber. Uh, these are probably equal amounts of. Uh, these two colors burnt umber and violet so I'm going to mix that um, I'm going to mix a tad bit of white in that so okay so I'm going to get my violet and my burnt umber my large brush here and I'd say like maybe two parts of burnt umber, two parts of the violet, and a little bit of white, just a tad. And I think instead of, oops, lost that one. Um, instead of that violet that I showed you, let's do this one. Um, I'm not sure I like that violet. Uh, let's do the brilliant purple. I think that that will make a nicer shade. It'll be more gray. Um, and that's what I'm looking for. And I'm just putting that right in that mixture that I just mixed. Just a tad of pur that purple kind of tone it down because that violet has more of a red and I kind of wanted to have like more of a gray shade so this is kind of like what it's going to look like you can see that okay and we're going to go around this area here yeah I like that better while we're waiting for that up there to dry. And we might even tone this down a little bit too. Sometimes like mixing the colors, you know, you might not like them. So you want to change them. And that's your artistic license. Um, you don't have to do it exactly like this. But you want it to be close. Close. Mm -hmm. There we go again with my painting outside the lines. <laughs> oh dear. Put a 
little bit more of that burnt umber in there. Maybe I'll stand up and do this so I can get it nice and straight if I can. Straight as possible. I want to get the sides too because those are important. It's part of this house that we're painting here. I think I'm going to make, mix another batch. I'm not really thrilled with that color. Let me get that purple again. That uh, That's that brilliant purple. Put that on all my palette here. Rinse out my brush because I don't like that shade in there. So I want it a little bit like more gray looking. That's just not my shade. That is not the color I'm looking for. For this. Okay, that's maybe a tad better now. A little bit of white. Just a tad of white. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Much better, much better. And I'll show you what this looks like. See? That's much better. See, this is just, just too, too, too dark. This is much better. See, that's sort of like a gray. And that's, I think, what we're looking for, more gray. I mean, you don't want a purple house. You want a nice... Nice gray house. So there we go. We're doing all very nicely. All right, so we're going to come down and do the sides here. I'm going to wipe some of this off. Wipe the color off. You can do that with a paper towel. Just wipe it off if you don't like what it looks like. Now, this is fine up here because we're going to be making that um, darker. Once this, but I'm working on this and I don't want to have to keep, there we go. See, it's covering up real nice now. Very good. Okay. Much better, much better. Much, much better. Okay, don't forget to get the top part with this. Now, because my paints are pretty thin today, I'm not needing a glazing liquid. over here you'll you'll need to just go a little bit on the sides on this because the other parts are different shades and we'll get the bottom once this dries a little bit once this dries a bit Some more of my raw umber out or burnt umber 
Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to go with my bronze umber because that's a bit darker than my raw umber. It's a bit darker, and I'm looking for a little bit darker. Oh, I just lost the color back there. I'm going to have to get that. That uh, burnt umber is just too light for me. And I want that window to be really dark. So uh, I have just raw umber from Gallery of Windsor Newton. I'm going to use that to color in some of the windows. And I'm just using my number 12. I'm going to stand up. Much better. Much, much better. See, this might still be too wet. I might have to let that dry a little bit more. A little bit more. And you're going to, like, bring it down like catty corner you know on an angle because this is the light hitting the window so you want some of the light to show through from the background but you also want this dark to show and I might just fill it all in and then wait till it dries a bit more. But I, would, I wanted to see how this was going to look because I really do want this to be very dark in here. And it's still not dark enough because it's still mixing with the paint that's still wet. So let me see if I can get around the little cat. I think it's drier down here. You can use your hair dryer to dry it if you want, you know, but uh, that's why I suggest that you watch the whole video before starting. Then that way, you know, if there's any changes to be made, you'll make them before you start to paint. You won't have an issue like that. I see this is still a little too wet too. Yeah, we'll just wait for that to dry some more. Okay. Now I'm going to stop for a minute. I want to get some tape and uh, some of my artist tape so that I can, um, you know, go on this so that I don't get into the other parts of this painting. So I'm going to stop my video for a minute and we'll be right back. Okay, so I have my artist tape. Uh, we are going to uh, go next into my shutters. Well, let's see what we're going to do here because I'm not sure if I want to do my shutters first. Okay, um, we're still waiting for some of this to dry. Uh... Let's see here. What do I want to do? I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to dry this with a hair dryer. So what I will do is fast forward this while I am doing that so I can get these other parts done because I want to get these done so that we can move on because we can't move on until they're finished. All right. So my mouth will be quiet now for a minute. Okay. Okay. I think we're ready. Now, um, so I'm still not liking this as too dark. I don't like that. I mean, that's too purple. I'm going to get a little bit of my, oh, there's another raw umber. Let's see what this one looks like. Some of these uh, raw umbers and things like that are just so, um, not sure. I think, well, it's about the same shade. Okay. Uh, I am going to mix some Payne's Gray, I believe, into that purple shade that I just did. And go over the purple. Let's see if I can find my... 
my Payne's Gray. Here we go. So I have Payne's Gray from Grumblocker. I guess this is what happens when you don't do your painting ahead of time and then you do another one. So I, I don't like to waste my canvas if I can help it. I guess I should try to waste them though. Because it's so hard for me to purchase anything these days. Okay. I think that this might be a better choice. Now I put the Payne's Gray into my purple. And I still, and I added a little bit of white. And I think I like this shade much better. Yes. So... more of a gray purple and then under underneath will be perfect i mean it'll be um just what we need we're gonna add that uh oh i'm gonna start sneezing <coughs> excuse me i've been sneezing quite a bit since the it seems like the um pollen oof, should be over by now Yes, much better, much better. Now, if you want to assure yourself of making a straight line, let me just get down here and get my tape. I'll show you what I would do. Put it right here, like that. And hope that it doesn't seep through because sometimes the tape it will seep through so you have to be very careful that you don't pile it onto that line you just kind of want to go across it you know that it's straight It can be very expensive, so you want to make sure that, you know, you get something that's a reasonable price. I, I was using froggy tape there for a while. It's all right. You know, you can use that. Um, it depends on what you want to use, how you want to use it. This makes a very nice straight line. Right here, it's kind of curved, so... I think I'm liking this much better. Much better. Just adding a little bit more white into my mixture because the house is kind of light. Light gray. Don't forget your sides, because this is part of the house. If you're hanging this painting, you want to make sure everything's pretty decently even. Make sure that nothing comes through, like that purpley shade. You don't want that to come through, so you're going to make sure you get that all covered. I'm still holding on to my tape. <laughs> That helps much, much easier, much better. Payne's Gray, just added Payne's Gray to that previous mixture of purple. And I like it so much better, so much better.
Okay, let me put my tape back on. Making sure that this is straight. So I see a little a couple little white spots, so you know that it is not straight when you see that. And that's what help it helps when you put that tape on. I'm saying that that's uh, usually what I do when I'm trying to get something very straight. Little tip. Some people use a um, masking liquid, which is all right too. I mean, you can do that. Um, Paints gray again into this mixture. A little bit of burnt umber, white. Getting the edges again, only because this is like part of the window, you know, house. You just want everything to be nice and neat. Nice and neat. Nice and neat. All right, we're going to rip this off. Much better, much better. Okay, I'll hold on to that tape. And get this. Very nice now. Okay, so I'm going to do the windows now. I'm going to put that, I'm going to use my burnt, I mean my raw umber. And I'm going to use my tape still. Still in good shape to use the tape. I'm standing only because I, I uh, want to get the top part right. I'm going into my smaller brush. That's my number 12. And I'm just going right into my raw umber paint. Much, much better. Much better. Want that darkness. Okay, and I am actually going to add some more of my tape. Because I want to be close very close here and I'm saying white so that means I didn't get close enough when I do that 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 tells me you know uh, and that help this is going to help me to make things straight I mean this is just what we need to do we can get close to the edges and make this the painting that we want to be see that mm -mm -mm. Alright, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a piece right here. And I'm going to put a piece right here. And at least we can get the middle window completed. And actually, I think I'm going to use my large brush now because I can actually fit it in there right. And just get some more paper towel. I use paper towel, and I a lot of people will buy Viva towels. I just get the cheap ones. I, I mean, I don't need to spend a lot of money on towels, paper towels. All right, am I in the way? <laughs> ha! 
So I'm just doing the darkness of the window. Nothing fancy here yet. We'll put some streaks in it after, but I want to get that dark in there. I just want to get the dark in. Okay. Let me make sure that's dark enough. And you know what? I can actually use some of my Payne's Gray. I want that to be dark. This is supposed to be dark. So I'm mixing some Payne's Gray in my raw umber because I want this dark. I want this dark. There we go. That's good. That's the way we want it. Payne's Gray is an awesome color. It's a good color for mixing. And it will make your painting rock. Okay, so there we go. We got that nice and neat. Let's do this one. Make sure it's tightly against there. And you can come down. Oh, let me just remove that a little bit. Okay. Just painting it in. Painting it in with my number. <coughs> I think this is I can't number twelve. Right. Simply Simmons. Now, I know that I get a lot of responses of likes and things like that, and I really would love you to like my page and uh, leave some comments, um, subscribe, and you can hit that little bell on the side there uh, that every time a painting is uploaded, you're notified that my painting is now there, my next painting. And if you really have some that, you're, that you would like um, to help me out a little bit so I can get another camera that would focus on my painting uh, palette. You can go to my GoFundMe page and those links are on the bottom of the page. I would love for you to check me out there. What's nice about GoFundMe is all you have to give is five dollars. <laughs> you don't have to give a lot. But it would help me out to get more equipment. I I can't afford it, unfortunately. And now my brother in law, he was so nice to get me this camera for my birthday. He's a good guy. My brother in law. And uh That family's been going through some hard times right now. Um, my great nephew has leukemia. He's only eight. And could use your thoughts, prayers, anything to help him out. Um, just feel so bad. Eight years old. And he, he gets sick after every chemo treatment. Um, he's lost all his hair now. He's just fighting. Fighting that disease. Terrible disease. Just an awful disease. And we're keeping him in our prayers. We're keeping him in our thoughts. And... We're just hoping for his recovery from that. He's in good spirits. His parents are trusting in God. And that's all we can do is just trust in God. Okay, I think I need to come down a little bit further here on this part right here. I know some people don't believe in God, but we are Christian here and 
even if you have positive thoughts, that's all that matters. Positive thoughts. And this one is dedicated to my little godchild. Well, he's not my godchild, I'm sorry. My great nephew. I'm an only child, so <clears throat> only through marriage have I gotten nieces and nephews. And it's just so thrilling because I've never had them. And my family doesn't keep in touch, so I don't bother with them too much. Uh, my my dad's side does. <clears throat> my dad's side does. <clears throat> and thank goodness for that because I don't know what I do. <clears throat> Just having them, they they make me happy. That's for sure. They're good people, and uh, I enjoy enjoy them very much. See how much nicer this is? Nice and dark. Your background should be dark on this because you're not focusing on the background. You're focusing on the cat. Some of the flowers that are in this painting. And that's what we're focusing on. We just want to make sure that all this is dark in here. I can sit down now. <laughs> you know, I've been watching American Idol, and I don't usually watch that program. Uh, it just amazes me how mean people can be about things. Um, commenting on the American Idol Facebook page. And, you know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know what's happened to our country or our people in this country, but I just, I'm not going to even go into it. I, I just, I just feel that if you can't say something nice and positive, why do you want to say something mean? And uh, I've noticed a lot of mean comments on there and... It's just this surprising to me. I I mean, I've never seen this other than in the workplace. Uh, you know, um, when I worked for several companies that kind of backstabbed you. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. You think people are your friends and then they do things to hurt you. Um, and I was never a person that was like that, but it's very discouraging. And this is one way, I guess, doing my art uh, kind of keeps me focused away from that because I really enjoy doing this. It's a way for me to escape some of that. Um, now, I used to be a project manager. I worked for an engineer also worked for a major gas company and I think I've told you this several times uh, after I got my degree I started to work for a major utility <clears throat> I was a technical field person and um, <laughs> boy I thought everybody was my friend and then I saw that I was being sexually harassed and you know it just uh, I think in several jobs that I had I was I know one job I was very much sexually harassed and it was terrible and so was this and uh, there was two jobs that I had that kind of um, did me in I was sexually harassed one place because of my age and that's a major company here that is a graphic design company here in Pittsburgh they're still in business, surprisingly. And then I also was harassed at the gas company that I worked for. And uh, it does it does something to you. It does something to you. Uh, now, I felt, too, because I had this degree. Now, I have my master's degree. I have a bachelor's degree in business. 
and my master's is in public management. I just didn't want to go back to to doing that kind of work. I mean, here I am, 65, and I'm still having to work. Uh, just can't make it on Social Security, and then they want to privatize it. Well, anyway, I don't want to get into that either. But um, I, I just uh, didn't want to go back to that, so I'm doing my first profession. I'm a hairdresser. That was my first profession. Never thought I would go back to that, and here I am working in a salon, and the people uh, are very rude at times. I, there's a guy that came in. This is a good one. He, he came in the other day. He had long hair and wanted to know if we do locks of love, and I said, well, we'll cut it for you. You know, we'll cut it for you, but you're going to have to send it in. Well, he started yelling at me because our company didn't do that. A big corporation, he says, and they're not, they don't do this. And he's yelling. And I says, well, I don't make the policies. I mean, I just follow them. And I says, that's the way it is here. I said, you have to send it in yourself, you know. Well, he wasn't real happy about that. But his hair wasn't long enough anyway. If you do locks of love, you have to... You have to uh, have at least 12 inches of hair. And we uh, at my salon will give you the information and you send it in. And that's just the way it is. I mean, I, I can't change that, unfortunately. That's just the way it is. So... But, he, you know, as I say, he was so mean to me, and I thought, well, it's not my fault, you know. Just not my fault. And we'll get people that are very rude, and, you know, they send uh, these things into the corporation that uh, they didn't like it. They'll lie. Some of the people will lie about their service. I mean, we're all about giving you the service that you want. And unfortunately, um, some people are just never happy. I would never have thought to do that to anybody. I just don't go back. If I don't like something, I just don't go back. And then you get people that give you the best review ever. And you wonder how these other people, where they're coming from. Okay, so I'm not really liking the way this is going on, but uh, I might have to put another coat on just to, now that we got the base coat on here. Um, sometimes what happens is because the acrylic paints aren't as good as some of the other brands that you would use, like um, Golden is a good brand, and I'm just using the cheaper colors here they don't go on as well they kind of do what I, what's happening here leaving lines and so that's okay but you're just using a little bit more paint that's all in order to get it to look nice I didn't know, um, I was going to do a painting with uh, gouache. I was wondering if you would enjoy something like that. Um, kind of interesting method here that I was going to show you. That might be my next painting. And then I have another painting that I want to do on wood. Because I know last year you guys liked that. It was the flag that I did on wood. I'm almost on Facebook for a whole year already. Hard to believe. I'm not Facebook. YouTube. I've been on Facebook for a long time. Long time. 
Well, I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, we got it nice and dark now. So I'm going to go into my light. And I'm going to put in some of my lighter brown, that one that I started with. And this is where I'm going to put some of the streaks. Because this is glass and you're going to see some streaks in the windows. Because the when the sun shines, you see that. This has to dry a little bit. So you're making those on an angle. That part has to dry. So I'm going to take off my tape. Nice and clean. Clean edges. Clean edges. That's what we want. Clean edges. All right, so the next step is that we are going to paint around here to give it a little depth. We are going to paint around the areas of the top here and around, and this is where I'm going to use my um, raw sienna. So I'm going to use my little flat brush. Just go straight into my burnt sienna here and just kind of go around these areas right in here. I'm thinking this should show up. So there goes my straight. Kind of blend it. Blend it into that. I'm going to go back into my purpley color here and just kind of come up here a little bit more here. I don't want it so, so wide here that it looks dumb. You can blend that into this. Just blend it in. I'm just going straight into that raw or burnt sienna. Kind of blending it down. Oops, that's too much blending. Too much, too much. I might mix up some more paint. Let me get some more of that. Because that was that little bit of purple. Little purple. Umber. and white and I'm going to make this even lighter because I still think that this is way too dark for me way too dark way too dark Very light. Don't have to get real close to that. Just a little lighter here. Try to get it lighter. Because I want my shadows to show up. Plus, we're going to be putting some bricks on this, and we want to make sure that the bricks show up also.
And I'm not getting real close to the shutters because I'm going to be putting that brown on. So. Same up here. Don't have to get real close to that. We're going to be outlining everything with a darker shade. I think with this lighter shade here, that'll help. That will definitely help. Okay, so I'm going to get my number 12 flat again, and I'm going to go into that Sienna, burnt sienna, just around here like this, just go straight down. Right. What I want to do, kind of blend it out a little bit. Blend it a little bit out. Just have that little bit of a shadow. Same here, a little shadow. That's probably your hardest part right here. It's having that little bit of a shadow underneath the flower box, along the sides. And we're going to be doing that around the window also and the shutters it's going to be here here we'll be blending that in I think I need a smaller brush. That one's just way too big. Too, too big. For this. my teeny weeny little brush here this is this uh this is a number i think oh number eight this is a uh bright number eight bright simply simmons i'm gonna go into that longer this way okay so we're gonna outline here i'm not exactly sure why we're doing that right now let me think about this i want to kind of like get this a gray shade so before I do that I'm just gonna go in with some gray uh, for these different shades here and I think when I do this I'm going to use my white we're gonna use this as a base coat I'm gonna use my Payne's gray my white and get these this is like a gray base instead of white just get like a nice gray base here nice gray base oh some of my blue that's my uh, watercolor pencil color this in.
right up to the shutters, right up into the shutters. Actually, that's part of the shutter there, so I'm gonna just do this. We're gonna make some more of that. Just give that grayness to it. Okay, I'm gonna probably have to go over that window again. Let me put some tape on. Let me put some tape on so we can get a nice straight line. Oops, I got my fingerprint in there. straight lines if the tape stays on only if the tape stays on we're gonna have nice straight lines <laughs> oops wrong way let's get that straight okay now what I want to do is I'm just putting a thin coat on because I want to make sure that I don't cover those lines for um, my shutter. Want to keep those lines uh, open. You know, you want to make sure that you're doing this, that things don't get covered up too much. Okay, take this off. Here. Uh -oh. Sometimes that'll happen with the paint um, that will... The, uh, oops, look what happened there. Uh, that they... Um, tape won't stick very well so you have to be very careful because you want that to stick This here needs to be painted over, but it will be actually painted over. See, it's starting to bleed a little bit, so you have to be very careful. Very, very careful when you do this. It doesn't bleed through.
want to be able to see our shutter lines. Just giving me a little issue here, but um, that happens. I'm just going to get some more tape, more my artist tape. <clears throat> oh, oh, that's not straight. And I'm probably going to have to go over my windows again because the tape is a lot. And I'm just going to have to go inside some of that. It's not, it's not too bad. I'm going to have to do this because it kind of bled a little bit. So I'm going to work on that. Um, and then I'm going to just clean this up. And then I will be back very shortly. Okay. All right, so I have finished up this part here, uh, like I said I was going to do. Now I'm going to um, outline some of these areas of the window. Um, uh, we're going to use some tape. We're going to use some tape again because we want to make sure we get a straight line around some of these areas. And let's see here. Let me get my tape. Um, so we're going to paint in here. Right here. We want that to be nice and straight. I think that's where I want it. Is that where I want it? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's it. So we'll paint right here. We're going to make that nice and straight. I just follow the line that's already there. Hopefully this will stick. It shouldn't be wet. Let it dry a little bit. There we go. And let's see. Um, right here, because that's part of a shutter also. Let's see here now. I'll make sure this is straight. Okay, then we'll get the other parts of this. So I'm going to use my raw sienna, and I have a new brush, it's a number two flat. Uh, I'm going to use that. I want that part, I think that's too straight right there. Okay. And we're just going to come down. Oh, might need to have a little water in this because it seems like it's a little dry. And sometimes it's a lot easier if you turn your canvas. 
kind of just follow the line here. All right. Let's get a little bit more water on there. Goodness, goodness. Maybe I need that number 12. This might be just too small for me for this. Let's get that number 12 social art working brush instead because it just seems like it needs a little bit more something here. Sally with me in the studio today. My precious little puppy. Alright, let's do this part here. I'll turn this around. Try not to think about it. Maybe it works better when you don't think about the uh, doing the line like that. <laughs> okay, so the next part we're gonna do this, and also there's a little piece right here that we want to do. We're gonna do this right here. Another piece of tape. I'm going to mix up some of that gray mixture too because we need to get it a little closer here. Uh, too much white showing here. Okay, rinse that out. Oh, can you see what I'm doing? I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Just making that outline so that... Okay. I'm taking the tape off. Off it goes. I'm going to make another... That's more that mixture of... Um, I had... Uh, is my raw umber. I am okay. Payne's gray and white. So I'm putting some Payne's gray out on my palette. Not a lot because I see I need to put more uh, paint on here. It's a little too see throughy for me. Then I have to also paint the little latch here. And before I finish doing that, I'm going to have a cup, a little swig of my coffee. Because you always have to have something in your studio. Always have something good in your studio. Okay, let me see if I can move this a little closer to me. And somewhat, or you can see it a little bit more. Alright, so I'm going to mix some of my white. Probably going to end up just a tad of the Payne's Gray. Don't need a lot. Okay. 
and I am going to put this right here because I missed the spot here. <gasps> Oops. Ooh, I guess I kind of went over there a little bit too much. Ooh, I might have to put more brown on. <laughs> kinda, there we go. Kind of like that a little bit better anyways. Oh, yeah, we still have enough. Uh, right in here, I want to get more. And what I want to do is get some more tape because this one's a little messed up. But yeah, that looks good. And um, once we get, I want to get this first. Let's see. Let's see here. We're going to make it nice and neat. Oopsie. Nice and neat. Yeah, tricky. This is what takes the time right here. Unfortunately, because you're just trying to make it look decent. You want it to look nice. And uh, sometimes you have to go over these things to get them to look right. I'm using quite a large brush here. Actually, this is a number 12. It's a Darice brand. And I think that, uh, oops, that window needs to be a little straighter. Okay, over there, Sally, what you doing? What you, hey, Sally, what are you doing? Huh? I gotta watch her because I don't want her to get eating anything that she shouldn't be eating. Huh? Oh, she's a trip. A little trip, that girl. Okay. Okay. Let me get this in here. blend in real nice now got some of that window covered that was a little crooked uh, okay. now I want to get the flower box also actually I probably should I think it's all right though a little glaze over this just a tad of a glaze here. Not going into the window. All right. And we'll be starting to work on our shutters. Woohoo! So let me mix a little bit more of my white. I have to get some more white out on my palette also. Mix some white and some of that Payne's Gray. for that just oops that's too much just enough to paint the window box and it's gonna be a lot lighter now and it's okay if you don't go all the way to the top because oopsie we're gonna be putting in uh, leaves in here because it's a flower box we're gonna put flowers in it window flower box Just be careful not to go out of the lines too much. Okay. Sometimes it's easier putting on the second layer of paint than it is the first. Get around here all 
little so. Okay, so this is a house. So we're going to be putting in some um, lines because we're there's like boards through here. This is going to be tricky too because we're going to need tape. Unfortunately, it's a hard one to do. So, we're going to start down here. Try, we're going to try to make them even. I don't know if it'll work, but we'll try. So, I'm just going to come here like this. Start at the bottom. Uh oh. Hold on. Hold on for one moment. I want to get this on here. Hopefully it'll be straight. Kind of picked up some of the other tape along the way here, so we're going to have to be very careful that we don't get that in there. But it goes nicely. All right, so let's get our number 12. We're going to go back into our raw umber so we can do this and try to get these lines. So what I'm going to do is just go straight across that tape. Get some more, pick up some more. Starting to run down here. Just across the whole thing. Okay. Line. Get rid of this so it's not in my way. Mm. I don't want it in my way. Okay. My second one. I'll just put it right here. Well, we should go up a little higher, I think. A tad higher. Try to space them evenly, but you know. It's an old house, so it's not going to be perfect. Same brush, number 12. Very carefully. carefully straighten that one out a little bit okay Another one here. We'll just use the same tape. I think it'll work. This is artist tape, so it adheres pretty well to the canvas. All right. Another row. I mean, if you can draw straight lines, you really don't need to have the tape. I just think it helps me, though. I 
until I learn to draw a straight line. I guess I'll be doing this for a while. Alright, here we're going to have one here. And part of that's just going to be under the shadow of that box. Not as big a lines now. I looked at the Getting these too close. I gotta get this off. Too close. So I'm just getting some water to wipe it off. I don't want them that close before it dries. Okay. because it's a little wet. having to do this with something different. Oh, uh, let's see here. I have a T, T square. Let's get that. This will be a straight line because you line it up with the edge there of your um, canvas. to get a smaller brush. Let's try that little one that I just got, number two. Let's try that. Let's see if we can get that nicely done here. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Wipe it off. Now at this point, I might just speed up the video because I'm sure you don't want to see me painting line by line. So I won't be talking and we'll speed it up. All right, so we got that all in now. Um, there is a line that goes right across here and I'm going to put that in now. Get my tape, put that in. I stand up here to make sure I get that straight. Actually, how's that? I'm thinking that that goes right to about here. Okay. Don't be afraid to use the tape. It really helps you out a lot. I'm going to get my number 12 um, decorative arts deco art brush. Go into my 
raw umber. I'm going to stand up for this because it's kind of hard to do when you're sitting down when it's up this high. Smooth it out a little bit. Okay. Woohoo. All right. So now we have that in. We're going to now paint the shutters. And we are going to get our phthalo green. We are going to mix that up with more white than anything. So I'm going to grab my white, pour it over here, and add just a touch of that green. We want it very bright, very bright. And... I'm going to add some more of my titanium white. I can't just, let me see, I got the wrong titanium white. Let's see, here we want our Grumbucker. white. So it's going to be a very pale green. Very pale. If you can see that shade. Alright, so we're going to paint all of our shutter. The whole thing. I must have some water in my bristles here. Now, if you really want to be um, good at this thing here, too, we're going to put some more of the shape down just so that it is a nice straight line. nice and straight. Also, we can put it on this side as well. Just push this back in there. Okay, we'll make it nice and straight. have things look neat especially when you're doing things like this I mean uh, painters do it they block off their things and you know make them look nice and neat and straight so so do artists we want to be just as good as a house painter see how much easier this is and then you can just put this on and not have to worry about a thing because you know it's going to be right inside all the tape 
nice and neat easy 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 all right let's take this off right away so it doesn't seep through and if it does seep through it's just a little bit it's not that big a deal not that big a deal Just a tad of white there. So what I'm gonna do here. I actually might go over that a little bit. I might make like a thin line. This is gonna take some time to dry because <laughs> it's so hot here that it's like humid and it's um giving me some issues with painting today. All right, so we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to block this off just the same, making sure that it's close there, close here. Just these little, this side of the shutters is a little different because it's not as, um, wide as you can see all right so we're going to just go over this now you got to get the other you got to get the other side of this with uh, the paint because we want to wrap it around here so I'm having to stand a little bit more in this painting, which is all right. Um, don't mind standing here and there. This off. Oh, ah. Okay, you know what I wanted to do? To, I want to get this little... Excuse me. Also, I've got a little bit of mess here. And I just want to even it up a bit. Okay, now let's let the shutters dry for a while because then we have to put in the little slats for it. And that's going to be fun. We might just do the outline instead of putting slats in because it gets so complicated at times here with this. We have some more coffee. So right now I want to move on to my little kitty cat. And I am going to start to make him with a um, some yellows. Uh, we're going to put, well, we're, we're waiting for this to dry. So let's get into, um, we're going to put some yellow together. And... We're going to make it a wash. We're just going to wash the cat with some of that yellow. Um, let's do that. I'm going to use my number 12 Deco Art brush again. So we're going to get that yellow. Add some water to it. 
just do like a little wash on him. the spot here for the brown so I have to get that in there now as you can see it's not covering that much and that's what a wash is it does just does what it says it's a wash you still see all the uh, parts of the cat that we are going to be putting in here Okay, I'm going to go into my raw umber, or yeah, that's what it is, my burnt, well, I think it's um, burnt umber, I am so sorry, and fill this in here like I was supposed to, it's part of that window. How's everybody holding up? Hope you're doing okay, hope you're seeing everything. Hope my head isn't in the way. Okay, there we go. Okay, got the wash in. All right, so let's see here now. That looks pretty. All those colors look so nice on here. Um, all right. We are going to All right, so what we're going to do now, we are going to paint some of the um, orange areas of the cat. Now, I am going to mix some, uh, let's see, I want to get some yellow, some of the orange. And some of that burnt umber. Just a tad of burnt umber. Ooh, may have gotten too, too much. A little bit more of that orange. Okay. There we go. All right. So, we are going to paint these little areas here. Let's go his, um, comes this away, down. Now, the thing about our cat is he's kind of, um, You're making some little wispy areas here. He's like a tabby cat. I don't know if that's what they call them. Then this is going to dry and then we're going to put some orange on top of it. I mean yellow, I'm sorry. Some yellow and white. Okay, let's see here. in here. He's got some of this in here. Definitely got some of this in here. Here. All right. Now, 
we're gonna get a little round brush if I can find one in my here we go I've got a number two round it's a Simply Simmons I'm going into my white and we are going to make this all nice and white if we can now that it's kind of yellow there I don't know if we'll be able to get it quite white this has to be a lot lighter His little paw is white. Around his eye and his little area in here is kind of light. Around his eye. ears. I have a little pink in them, but I'm going to get this white. Okay. Now, I'm going to start making little stripes in here. And I'm going to use white because I think if I use white, it kind of brings out that yellow. And he's kind of stripy. And that's what we're kind of looking for here. Okay. So I'm just kind of making this a little bigger because those stripes that he has are kind of big and it's kind of pulling that yet orange off so that we're getting those nice little cute little stripes that he has and if a little bit of white shows that's even better yet because this cat has multiple colors I mean it's not like uh, Get this here. There we go. See his stripes showing. Now we'll get these ones over here also. Okay, now, <clears throat> because this is not showing much white, I'm thinking I might want to get some gesso. I think that might be a good thing. So, I'm going to get some of my gesso. I hope I can open it. Oh, yeah. This is my white gesso. And, oh, it's like a rock. I don't know if it's any good. Oh, it's no good anymore. Hmm. I guess I don't. Oh, I know. I have Liquitex. Well, it's clear. 
Well, this is what happens when you run out of paint and things. Let's see. I'm sure I have something that's heavy. Heavy, heavy. And if I don't, oh well, we'll just use the white and we'll keep going over the kitty kitty. We'll just keep going over him until he gets light. Er, that's all. I want him to get lighter. Still using my little round brush. Just kind of like stroking it down. And right in here, his chest area, there's a little bit of brown, so I'm going into my raw umber. Just kind of like making some depth here. I'm going to rinse that out and I'm going to go around his face again. <clears throat> and around his little paws. Yellow can be pretty potent when you don't want it to be, I guess. So, I am going to do his little paw. Let's see, I want to um, mix some of my orange with some white. Make it kind of light, very pale orange. And we are going to do um, his little nose. Like that. Hopefully it'll show. Maybe not. We need a little bit darker orange. Little orangey nose here. Okay. Uh, we want to go around the inside of his ear right here. A little orangish color pinkish color. We're going to do his little paw pad here. His little tips here. Okay. Uh, I think we could do his little mouth with this also. Let me take a little bit of the violet that I put out before that one shade of violet that was just too dark for this um, house paint. I just want this to show up. I think this is better here. Okay. Okay. A little right on the tip of top of his nose is a little white too. A little white spot. Right here. Right there. Some more of that. Uh, 
number. Just kind of like a little bit coming up here. Okay. Kind of like a shadow through there. Put some more white. Here, I believe it is. Isn't he adorable? Oh, he's so cute. Such a cute little kitty, Billy. Alright, so now we want to get that eye, and I am going to just use a little bit of my dark umber. Well, I could use my Payne's Gray, too. I'm just going to go into my Payne's Gray, outline the eye. Just the indication of an eye. And I guess I could put some little, little specks here. Nothing fancy. It just wants to indicate that that's some little areas for the hair. Okay, let's see here now. I'm looking for my little teeny, teeny liner brush. Here it is. Alright, I'm going to wet it and go into my white. I have a little liner brush and I'm just going to stick some hairs out. And even though you can't see them, there's going to be hairs here too, as well as over here. From the kitty kitty. It's got lots of them. Maybe I don't like that so much. Let me get some of that umber again. I'm going to go over that. Okay. See, I would like to have this mouth show up better. I'm not really enjoying that mouth and his nose. He can't even see his little nose. I mean, it has to be a little bit. That. Okay. Little paw pads. Get those in. Kind of. Yeah, there we go. At least you can see them now. All right. So we got got our little kitty kitty in. Now, let's see. We're going to go... Um, Oh, he has a little white under here, too. Wow, we... Okay, I didn't see that before. So let's get that in there. His little belly. this is drying I can see that it's working better working much better all right all right 
So we got that in. I think these are pretty dry now. So we're going to paint that in with a darker um, phthalo green. And then what we'll do is we're going to go through this again uh, with the lighter green that we have. So we're going to put this coat on. Just follow. You know what? I'm going to put my uh, tape in. That good old tape comes in so handy, doesn't it? It certainly does. It certainly does. You don't want to go outside the lines. Ooh. Oh. oh, I hate when that happens. Because I don't have that down holding it, it keeps falling. And if I put this down, then you get a shadow and you can't see it. So I didn't want you guys to have a shadow. say the difficulty in this painting uh, it's just very time-consuming and very very um, detailed so if you don't like to play around with details this painting isn't for you plus with all the taping off and things like that that you might have to do um, you might not like doing this painting I'm going to go through this again because I don't like the way that looks. I mean, there's some things, you know, that you have to deal with in this painting. So you just want to take your time. Make sure you're doing straight lines and um, this is like my only method of doing straight lines. And if you do have a better method, tell me. I would love to know. I mean, this is the only way I know how to do it getting the straight lines and things like that. Uh, like I say, it's not one of the easier paintings to do, but it's fun. That's what, that's what matters. It's fun. Okay, instead of using that brush, I'm going to use my big flat Flat brush, my big number 12. Bright. Which is a Simply Simmons. I'm going to do that with this. Might need a little water in that. It's, uh, a little dried out. Try to keep your paints moist in this heat. You want to keep them moist. As moist as possible. smooth as possible. Smooth as possible. Make sure everything is covered up nicely. Over. Now 
Now, before I put the pattern up, I want you to watch the whole entire video because it's important to understand what you're doing. <clears throat> before you start to paint. It's always good to watch your video, uh, video beforehand. Um, I'm going to have a little swig of my coffee. Okay, now I know I put my tape somewhere because I just used it. And uh, beats me. Don't you hate that when you just put something down and then all of a sudden it's gone? It's gone. because we're going to do this. bit darker than I wanted it. A little bit more white to that. Much better, much better. Look at that. What yeah. I think that's better. Okay. Just got my fingerprints in there, so I'm going to go back into my Thalo green. My nails. this dry. Let it dry. Ooh, don't want to paint that. That walk in there, right? paint this orange. How about that? That's going to really stand out here. Uh, we are going to use uh, chromium orange. Well, we're just going to use the orange that I have. And we're going to mix the orange and the yellow. And get that in there. Make sure my brush is ridded, ridden of all that green. Pull that orange, stick some yellow in there, and 
just paint this orange. Ooh. Orange yellow. Okay, it would be nice if my uh, canvas would stay still on it. Guess I better hold on to it. I'm not worried about this part here because we're going to have those leaves and flowers in here. So. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to get my other brush that is the same. It's a number 12. I'm going into that light um, color that we did with the... We're going to put some of these shutter colors in. So this does not have to be perfect. We're just going to kind of wing this. Just an indication that these are the shutter pieces. Kind of, it's funny how it looks so light against this uh, dark, huh? But it is the same color as that. Same exact color. Do that over here also. Start up here. I'm just tapping these in. Okay, now we got to do the butterflies. Um, I guess we want to make these sort of like a white little butterflies like those little white things that you see out there okay. and we're going to put the flowers in we're still recording too that's awesome Awesome.
Okay. I'll have my white. I'm going to go back into her. Oh, that looks a little gray, doesn't it? Kind of just getting some of that fluff over some of that. I never did put those little hairs in there, did I? They can show up, but there we go. All right, little hairs, 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 hairs. All right, we're gonna move on to our beautiful flower bed, and I want to do some decorating on this uh, these butterflies. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna get my little. little round brush and I'm thinking I want to make this a little purpley color I just go around the edges here make it a nice little butterfly Just kind of like wipe your, your uh, brush off. I'm going to bring it in. Bring it in a little bit. Kind of shade it like that. And uh, let's put a little bit of violet, that red violet, a little dot here, one here, here. And here and let's make this one yellow little yellow butterfly and some of that red we're gonna kind of outline that also another purple because I think that's so pretty let's make this a little bit darker there we go and they're pretty pretty little butterflies pretty pretty I can see why he's batting at them. They're so cute. All right. So what we're going to do now is get some of our phthalo green. And we're going to stipple the light green, which we're going to make. Uh, we're going to make some light green with some phthalo green. Some of our yellow. And some of our titanium white. Put some more of my yellow in here. Makes a very pretty green. And we're going to stipple all that in there. But before we do that, I want to put some of the chrome yellow. I'm just going to stipple these in just 
see, I, this has to be a little darker. So what I'm, instead of mixing that like that, I am going to get my, Hooker's green. I'm going to use Hooker's green. I'm going to stipple that in first because I like to get my darks in, especially with the leaves. Stipple that in first with my round brush because that phthalo is just too yeah, uh, too light, too light. So let's just stipple. See, this is stippling. You're going to stipple it through. Now, you're not going to be able to see too much up on the top here because of the um, darkness of the windows, but we'll get that in there too. Just stipple it in, get it onto the cat, into the window. Stipple is just you're pouncing the brush right off, and I'm using that little round brush. And this is going all through the flower box. And if you have a larger round brush, it probably wouldn't hurt. Let's see if I can find one. I do have a larger brown, round brush, so I'm going to try that. This is a number six round. Six. get a little bit more coverage that way. I'm going to grab some of my yellow. Get some of that in there also while I'm stippling. And I added a um, white to it just so it would show up a little bit more and actually if you put a little white on your brush the green shows up pretty good too well we don't want it that white but Gives it a little bit more oomph. Stippling is quite an interesting little concept. I, I always enjoy stippling uh, a drawing. And uh, you can use lights and darks. And it just really is amazing how nice it turns out. Um, doing that. All right, I'm going to rinse it out so I can go directly into my yellow. Doing the same thing, get my brush loaded with enough yellow so I can go through here. Maybe add a little white to that yellow because you want it to show up. a little lighter here. Ooh, maybe that's too light, but it's a nice little foliage.
Isn't that cute? Okay, now I'm going to do a little something different. We're going to add some pretty little flowers in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm getting some um, cotton swabs. Cotton swabs. I'm going to put them all together here in a little bundle, just like this. I'm dipping it in my violet, my violet and my white. Some white. And I'm going to put some of these in here. Just like little flowers, cute little little things here. That's sweet. A little bit more white. A little bit more of the just tapping it in little areas. I'm gonna go into that lighter purple of mine too, just to kind of give it a little different shades here, different shades of this. Make little clusters. Little clusters. Now some people will put a um, rubber band around their little cotton swabs and you can do that. You can. Um, I'm just choosing not to. So whatever makes it easy for you is what you want to do. These are just little teensy weensy little flowers in here. Okay, now um, I'm going to get my little round brush that I had before. My small round brush, that's the number two. I'm going to paint a few little flowers in here. So I'm going to get my purple, I'm going to get some white. And I'm just gonna pounce a couple little little teensy weensy flowers in here. So what I'm doing is just tapping it and pulling it in like that, making little star flowers, okay? Little details, little details. So what you do is you put your point and then you pounce it in. You put your point at the edge of the flower and then just tap it dot it and there it is see a couple little extra little flowers in through here so it kind of just brings it all together so you might kind of like have five of these if you can five is nice uh five little um Petals, petals. Okay, now I'm going to wipe that off. I'm going to go into my darker shade of violet there, kind of just like almost tap it on top of it, kind of just give it a little pizzazz there. Don't have to do every one of them, just to kind of like give it a little pizzazz there. All right, uh, now let me get some more of my green. I can go in with my little one here. Tap it. Just tap it up here. Get some more of that yellow.
Oh, I just love it. What do you think? I think we can call this a painting. I think we are finished with this. Um, I don't think there's anything else that we need to do with this uh, at this point. Um, let me get my Q-tips again. I want to kind of, instead of making those look so muddy, I'm going to go into my white, or my lilac, my lighter lilac. Kind of like tap a little bit more in there. There we go. Don't want to overdo it. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed this painting. Uh, I enjoyed painting it, and always, as always, painting is fun. Um, there's so many things you can do. Now, I didn't put that line back in there because I think I like the window the way it is. Um, so I didn't, like, make a little line there um, I don't see anything else now what I would like is for you to make some comments I would like you to subscribe maybe hit the bell that's over there and this way you get updates of when I post a painting uh, it, I'd love for you to subscribe also um, it's important to me that you like, leave some comments besides a like uh, it's nice to hit that like button, but I also like to hear comments from you, too. I'd like to know what you'd like to see me paint. Um, I have a couple other ideas coming uh, that I'm interested in doing. Uh, hopefully, you will like them also. I want to plan on doing a wood painting. And um, I'm going to put some of those in here. <laughs> kind of the yellow wasn't showing up there, so... I hope that helped it. Let me just... Sometimes you look at these things and then you start to see other things that you can put in. There. Okay. So, um, until next time, we'll see you. And hopefully we'll have a wood painting next time. I think you'll like it. And... Um, We'll learn how to do those again. Uh, remember last year I did a couple. One was with the flag and the other one, uh, I think we did one um, on faith. Maybe not. Uh, but this one is uh, going to be a real cute little thing and you'll enjoy hanging that outside somewhere. So until next time, have a good day and enjoy painting. Bye.